my god Early on to try to avoid the rushes of Ramirez who's a real proven pro and he's really going to chase him and uh, uh, Whitaker's going to dominate early, I feel, because of his speed. Because he's got hand speed, foot speed. Well, it is felt that he may and must dictate the pace, Whitaker. Because Ramirez has got a lot of heart, a lot of stamina. He'll pace himself well. He could be very, very tough later on. So the speed of this young hare, trying to catch this tortoise and beat all his experience in the early rounds. We'll see how it turns out. There's only one thing I'm concerned about with Whitaker. I watched him in the gymnasium early on. He does cross his feet when he goes both ways. So he's liable to catch a right hook or a straight left hand and get dumped on his pants. Well, it happened to him earlier in his career with Roger Mayweather, but he's got a jab he says he's very proud of now. He has worked on it and improved it just in the last three weeks under the guidance of Joe Ferriello. Well, I'll tell you, that jab has really been stinking those sparring partners, and he's really been setting them up. It is an unusual matchup in that both men, as you can see, are southpaws. You don't see that very often, certainly not on a world championship bout. Well, usually they're able to got guys coming with right-hand stances, and what happens, they're able to do counter shots. Now, either one don't know how to handle the southpaw, because Whitaker's only fought about seven southpaws, and I think Ramirez only met a, a half a dozen himself. And, of course, Whitaker's experience with southpaws came as an amateur. He's a good body puncher, and that jab we're seeing early from Pernell, he prides himself on his ability to go to the body. I'll tell you, I've never seen a cooler fighter than Pernell Whitaker treat this week. He's really been ready, he wants it, and he's hungry for this kind of a win. It is scheduled for 12, the WBC Lightweight Championship. There he goes crossing his legs now, and that's a no-no because he's liable to catch a shot while he's in the midst of crossing. <laughs> Awaiting the winner of this, a mandatory bout with the WBA lightweight king, Oh, good body work, partially blocked though by Whitaker. I tell you, he really landed a real good straight left hand. Uh, Ramirez should be taking those kind of shots, but when he took a right coming in. Right now it's jab for jab, and indeed a very impressive jab showing by Pernell Whitaker. I'll tell you, Fred Astaire would have been jealous of that step. That was a real good move he put on Ramirez. Well, Pernell, known as Sweet Pea, certainly was the most stylish of all the Olympic medalists in 84. He caught the eye of so many people, but it's taken this long to get to a championship bout. But the chance is his tonight. He's acquitted himself very well here in round number one. As you know, it is the foot speed of Pernell Whitaker that is most impressive. And the style. And he dazzled his man in the first round with that. Ramirez did admit to us he might take a couple of rounds just to figure the style of Whitaker out. Joey Ferriello told Pernell, cool it, cool it. Uh, just a piece of cake. Just keep doing what you're doing. Don't change. And don't be over eager. Realize you've got 12 rounds to take a little bit more time. The speed of Pernell is going to make Ramirez look like he's standing still sometime. Exactly. But speaking of standing still, that is something Whitaker cannot afford to do. He can't afford to trade punches for this guy. Well, no, he can't. That's one thing he can't do, because Ramirez bangs with both hands, and there's liable to nail you on. And if he nails him while he's crossing those legs, says, I can't stress it enough, he's going to drop him. Cornell's task, and he's doing it well so far, is to get in and out. Trying to dictate the pace. When Ramirez takes it to him, then he's got to use the speed he has to get away. One other thing Pernell can't do is trade punches with Ramirez, because Ramirez gets cooking when you trade shots with him. He usually ends up with the best shot. Whitaker describes his new jab as an off-beat jab, coming from different angles and confusing to an opponent. I tell you, Don, he's looking every inch of champion right now. He's doing everything right. He's keeping Ramirez off balance and keeping him turning. 
Ramirez, a man who's now 29, almost in a couple of weeks, it'll be 15 years since he's been boxing professionally. Which means, yes, he began at 14 as a pro boxer in Mexico with no amateur experience. When we talked to Ramirez, he was a very interesting young man. So I've been fighting half my life, which he has been doing. There was the left that Whitaker almost got nailed with. That's what he can't do. He can't trade punches with Ramirez. He's got to play the cat and mouse game, hit him and get out of there. In and out, you're right. Ramirez trying to stalk him more now, trying to dominate him in the second round if he can. But he can't sleep to the day as Ramirez bangs the body with the left hand. An interesting matchup, different styles, these two star pawns. I actually think Purnell's got Ramirez frustrated because Ramirez went right-handed that time. The jab is constant, as is the movement on the part of Purnell Whitaker. The second round is scheduled for 12, draws to a close in Paris. Here is Purnell Whitaker going back to work with that marvelous jab he has displayed since the outset of this 12-round battle for the WBC Lightweight Championship in Paris. Carlos Guzman of Argentina, the referee, has not had very much to do. That uh, Ramirez's corner was very cool in there, but they, uh, they better start Ramirez doing a couple of things because he's following uh, Whitaker around like ring around a rose. You can't do that. you got to cut him off and do his thing. Well, Ramirez has had some memorable battles with Terrence Ailey, a couple with Edwin Rosario. It's his second reign as the WBC lightweight champion. He pointed to those two guys as the fastest guys he ever fought. But let me tell you something, Pernell Whitaker is quicker than the both of them. He also mentioned Hector Camacho, but he did allow for the fact that they're all different. He wants to see him before he decides what he's all about. Whitaker did not want to see any tapes, any films of Ramirez whatsoever. He feels it's misleading if he gets set for one thing and the guy says something different when he gets into the ring. So he's getting his first look at Ramirez now. Good body shot, followed with the left in Whitaker. Very dangerous Whitaker trading like that because I'm afraid he's going to catch a shot from Ramirez. And Ramirez is the puncher. Make no bones about it. Relentlessly, he stalks Fernell Whitaker from Norfolk, Virginia. Whitaker has power, 15 and 0, and nine of those wins have been knockouts. And he's forcing his man, despite his experience, to be a little wild right now. This is what he can't afford to do. Can't trade punches, no. Ramirez, like the next bottle of wine from the waiter here in Paris, just keeps on coming, it seems. I see Ramirez's manager, Raymond Felix, has given the waving sign. Keeping him busy. You gotta get busy. A good start for Fernal. I would think you'd have to give him the first two rounds, but this round could be a little different. There is the right landing by Ramirez. Ramirez. Ramirez is really dogging Whitaker, trying to get him, trying to trap him, but he kind of gives Whitaker a lot of credit when he slip and he slides. The chase is on. The tortoise and the hare we alluded to at the start of our coverage from Paris tonight. The court is slowly, steadily pursuing his man as the Castro Whitaker makes his way around this rig, which is 18 and a half in diameter. So a better third round for Ramirez here as it draws to a close. Stay with it. Ramon. Round four is underway between Ramirez and Whitaker. Angelo. And Ramon Felix really did a good job in the corner with him. He says, close, close, cerquita, cerquita. And he's, he's telling him to let the shots go downstairs. Abajo, abajo, abajo. That was the instruction. Well, Ramirez told us he figured to have a couple of tough early rounds against Bernal and then wanted to wear him down, as we have told you. I think that's putting him mildly down. He's been getting the heck kicked out of him these first three rounds. The third was a better one for him, but he still might have lost it indeed. No, he lost it. He got, he got out-punched, out-smarted, and he missed the most punches. 
Remember, Ramirez of the Red Sox is at 106 pro fights. Whitaker only 15 to this day. You may say that's not enough to groom a world champion, but with talent like that, it may well be. What I'm concerned about in this ring, Don, they got these uh, advertisements in there, and they're like on an angle. And if uh, Whitaker grabs his foot on it, he's going to slip on it because it's a bad thing where they're in close to the ring. They have advertisements on the stool, on the boxers' trunks, as you see with Ramirez, on the sponge dish. In fact, if we don't watch ourselves, they might stick one on her back, a billboard here, and charge somebody for that, too. Well, they may have it in the bottom of the shoes. I don't know, but we may not see that because they're both taking good care of themselves. This is Ad Man's Heaven, I'll tell you. In La Valois, Paray, in the outskirts of Paris, just off the Champs Elysees. Right back Whitaker, of course, has a broken ankle in his career. He's had a broken hand that has bothered him. His left hand has bothered him a bit of trading here.